Hello guys and welcome back to another Amp Creator tutorial. Today what we're going to be looking at is the return blocks and how they all work. So let's get into it and I'll show you after the intro. So welcome back and I have a little example set up so we can actually see how the return blocks actually function. I've just basically printed out some stuff on the screen so we can basically see what's going on. Now what's happening is under the uh, action bar right up here is basically outputting a value based on the return. And if we change the block, so right now we're holding air, so it's just telling us that we're holding air. I don't know what the number means, I've tried to figure that out, but it doesn't really make any sense. That just happens to be for the uh, item return type, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Uh, but with the other types, there are different um, ways you can basically set up the return block. Now what a return block basically does is just return a value. It allows for compression of conditions a little bit more and it's also used for uh, additional conditions for some elements as well. So things like portals have additional conditions that you can basically restrict the portal from being uh, used unless the condition is met. So in a sense, the return blocks actually have a quite a uh, useful function to them. It's just a matter of understanding how they all work. So the stone is actually under a under one category. I believe it's a true return uh, type. And then we have the wood, which is under, I believe, if I remember correctly, a number. So uh, there's two different types of things. Now with the true or false, you can't really have multiple di different types if it's true. Obviously, um, because it's true or false, there's only two states. So if it's true, then you have to just kind of output one with numbers or a string as well as items. You can actually have multiple different outputs. So this is where the wood comes in and we can actually have uh, oak wood still under one category but we're using the number one where the spruce law spruce wood is under the, uh, number two so and then if it's air then obviously we're testing that I have another example with some dirt now this is using strings so we can use grass blocks as its own string and then there's also dirt blocks which are categorized under its own category and this is also the item um, testing uh, return which is uh, broken down to either weeds or other flowers so um, basically that outputs a one before it for some reason and then I have it set up so if it's not either one of those it's just going to return error. So let's hop into mCreator and I'll show you the, the how the conditions actually work as well as how to use the return blocks and I'll explain a little bit more about additional conditions. All right, so let's take a quick look at the stone condition. This is from the true or false statement. Now, if we take a quick look at how it's set up, what we're doing is we're using an if statement to basically test for some different conditions. We're using or in order to test for specific things. Now, if that is correct, all these conditions are met or one of them is met, which is why we're using or. So. Obviously, we can't hold all the different types of items in one hand, so I needed to use an OR statement. So if it's either stone, andersite, granite, or pardon me, diorite, or andersite, then what it's going to do is return true. And then the return, and then if it's not true, then if it's not one of these items, then it's just going to return false. This is basically a gist of how additional condition needs to be set up for things like portals, um, range items, things like that. So you need to use a true or false statement for basically returning the value. Um, 
Now, if, if you just want to create a new one, you can actually go and go grab a regular if statement like this. And then what you want to do is you want to go back to flow control and then you want to grab the true statement or the light blue um, return statement. And then you're going to need to go under logic and grab a true block. And then what you need to do is basically place that return block also on the bottom here and then set this to false. Now that is important for the conditions to actually work. You need to basically return a false value after. Um, that goes for any type of return block, not just the true or false ones. So right under this if statement, you basically want to put your conditions. You can have just a singular condition like this, or you can use the and block to basically or the operator here to basically test for multiple conditions like so or you can make a multiple choice selection so basically if it's this or that then you can do that and we can do something very similar to this uh, you, as far as what you can put here for your condition it's completely up to you how you basically want it as long as your condition can be uh, run in your actual procedure for its dependencies. So in our case, uh, this condition here only has the entity requirement for dependencies, and I am using that in the player update tick, as you can see here. This is what the actual condition required dependencies are, and this is what we can actually use. So entity X, Y, Z, and world. All right, so now let's go and take a look at some of the other conditions that I have set up. We have the wood condition, soil condition, and flower condition. So let's quickly take a look at the wood condition. And this one uses actually strings. I was mistaken on the actual type of return, but it basically does the exact same thing. So what we're doing here is we're returning a very specific string value. And what we would want to do when we actually use this value later on is we want to test for that same string. So what we're doing is returning and then we're testing for a condition. And then we're returning a value of oak underscore wood. And that basically tests for all different values under oak wood. So oak log zero, oak strip or stripped oak log, and then there's the oak uh, wood, and then there is uh, stripped oak wood. So all these are different types of variants of oak uh, logs. So what I've done is just called it oak wood and returned that value. Same thing goes for spruce, and then for the return value for the um, condition that is false, then basically what I've just done is outputted a value of null. You can basically put anything in this particular section as long as it's not something you want to return for actually being true or not. So that's basically how the strings are set up. Uh, let's take a look at the soil one now. So in the soil condition, we're using numbers and very, very straightforward stuff. The condition itself is the dark blue one. The green is the string. The light blue is true or false. And the red is an item operator or return value. So what we're doing here is we're testing for different types of grass and we're returning a value of one. And the other condition that we're doing here is we're t testing for different types of soil, which we're returning a value of two. If it's false, then what we're doing is returning a value of zero. So it doesn't basically, it's not either one or two. So it just returns zero. So it's not um, basically going to output any specific type of thing. So that's basically how the numbers are set up. Let's move on to the items. So for item conditions, uh, this is a little bit different. This actually basically requires a different type of block. This is requiring the Minecraft components and then an item block like this. And then you would basically select your item that you would want. And then you would put that on your return value itself. 
So in our case, what I've basically done is I've returned a value of a dandelion when it's basically selecting a dandelion. And then I've also tested for other items that are um, basically a white type of flower. And I've returned the, the actual value of a dandelion. Now, there was a little bit of an odd bug with this. Um, if you were to cycle over to this other condition here and then back through these two conditions, it would actually stay as the dandelion for some reason. But once you got to the dandy or the or once you got to the daisy, then when you scrolled back, then it would be over to the daisy again. So even though that's returning a daisy, I'm not sure if that actually can be tested for multiple conditions like this. You might have to return a uh, one per line like this and then return a specific value. Um, that's the only way I can really think that it would basically be considered as why it would be doing that. So it should technically work as all of these returning this, but for some reason it was returning the dandelion as well. So just a simple note to keep in mind when you're actually creating your conditions for items. And again, the, the, the one thing that it does do is it's returning a little number one before it. So if you are wanting to basically output text, then I suggest outputting the text uh, from a specific string uh, that you've created, not through an item return value. So let's head over to the uh, player update tick where all the conditions were actually going on and being used into the actual procedure. There's so there's a little bit more going on in this procedure. So let's take a look at that. So creating the conditions are completely fine. You can actually create a bunch of conditions, as many as you want, and they will function great if they actually can be used in a procedure itself. So basically what we're doing here is we're calling that particular, particular uh, procedure and getting the value of something. So to do that, what we need to do is go under the advanced tab, and then there are four different blocks right here. And what those basically do is we're getting the return value of something of the condition that we basically made. So the condition would be the procedure that we just covered. So there are four different types based on the different types of return values. There's a light blue one for the true or false one. There's a number one, which is the dark blue. And then there's the green one for string values. And then there's the red one for the um, item return values. So that is just the part that we actually need to basically test for or get the actual data from and we need to actually use the logic operators for testing the value if it is true or not. So in our case, what we've done for the light blue one is we got the light blue operator and we tested if it is equal to, and we're doing that for all of them. We don't need to actually change the symbol for the operation of the actual operator itself. So to create a light blue one, what you would do is you basically grab the light blue and then you need a true or false statement. And then you would want to test if it's true. And then what you would do is go to advanced and then grab a logic operator uh, for the call get condition. And then you want to select your actual condition that you want to run your uh, your condition from. So basically we only have one stone or one logic condition. So this is the only one that's showing up in the list. If you have multiple logic conditions, then you'll have a whole bunch of them that you can scroll through. And what this will do is it will test to see if the return value is true, or if you want to test for it to being false, and you can return false as well. And this will basically be what you need to add to your actual if statement. So like this, if you want to basically test if the condition is true for that. Now, 
string is a little bit different. We need to do basically the same thing, but we actually need to go to logic, grab a string operator, and then we need to go to text, grab a text block, and then what we need to do is actually type out the same condition that we have in the return function. So if we want to test if the value is false, then we need to get the false value. If we want to test if it's true, then we need to go and grab the different types of values for the true um, return part. So in our case, we are, these would be our true, this would be our false if it fails. So we, if we wanted to test for oak wood, then we would grab this and then we would put it in this blocks right here. And then all we need to do is grab our call uh, procedure and get return value and then select our list one our procedure from the drop down list and then what we can do is we can test for that value uh, numbers are very very similar to that particular same method uh, what we need to do is grab a dark blue operator though and then what we need to do is go to math grab a number and then we need to set that number for the same number as what we're doing with the true value itself you can also test for the false value if you want to test for it that in our case the false value is zero and then our other values are one and two so we would want to test for our one or two conditions if it's true or zero if it's false and for that particular block we need the dark blue operator like this and then you would select it from the drop down blocks for what condition you want uh, to basically run in this particular procedure and then you would put your basically your procedure script what you want to do actually if this is true so moving on to the last one for the item procedure this is the one that's a little bit more complicated but I'll cover it as quickly as possible if we go and grab a logic operator and then grab an item uh, operation then what we can do is we can grab our advanced return value and then we can select our procedure itself and then what we want to do is we want to go to Minecraft grab a any type of uh, condition that we basically want so if we want to test if it, the main item in the main height item in the main hand of the provided entity you can do that or you can test if a specific item is the same as that one so in our case this and then you can basically re return a condition if that is true so that's basically how you can basically get the return functions to work uh, now for the logic conditions the the ones that basically are set up like this this is basically how additional conditions work so it's already programmed in so it needs to be a, re a true or false uh, condition and you always have to return a false number so hopefully you guys found today's tutorial useful if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out